Hi all and welcome back. Today we will discuss about lists in Scala. As I have mentioned in my previous video that list is one of the most used collections in Scala. So we will explore it in a bit more detail. We will discuss about various utility methods of lists. We will try and go through few examples to understand what these methods do and where they are useful. But even before we start with these methods, we'll learn how to iterate through the list and process its elements. So we already know that lists are implemented as continuous chain of elements or links. And we have seen that lists have a head that is the first element of the list and the rest of the list is called tail. Again, I will use Scala shell or ripple to play around with examples of Scala list. If you remember from our previous video, the list is by default immutable. Let us see how we can utilize pattern match along with head, tail and cons operator to deconstruct a list. Let us try to reverse a list using pattern match. Here, I'll declare a new method reverse. The method takes in a list of integer as parameter. We are going to recurse through the list, so we must declare a return type, which is again a list of integers. Now, we'll try and pattern match this incoming list. In first case, we'll deconstruct the list into head and tail and try to find out if there are any elements in a list. If list has a head, then we will take the head, but we need to stitch this head at the end of the list and then we'll recurse through rest of the list. In the second case, we will find out if we have reached at the end of the list then we'll return an empty list. Let us create a new list range. Let us create a new list using range method of list. The new list will contain 10 integers. Let us use this new list to test our reverse method. And we can observe that we are able to reverse the list. So this was one of the ways to use recursion and pattern match to evaluate all the elements of the list. Not only we can pattern match to find out the head and tail of the list, but we can deconstruct the list into any number of elements. Let us take a look at another example. Consider a scenario where we want to pick up all the elements at even positions of the list. For example, consider this new list of arbitrary integers. So, I want to pick up 4, 9, 5 and so on. Let us see how we can do that. I'll declare this new method pick even that will again take in a list of integers as parameter. Again, we must define a return type of the method, which is again list of integers. We'll pattern match on our incoming list. In this method, we'll first try to define easier scenario. So following our previous example, we know that if the list is empty, then we must return an empty list. So in first case, so the first case is nil and will return an empty list. Now because we are only interested in the second element of the list, if there is only one element left in the list, then we are going to ignore it and again will return an empty list. We'll use underscore to denote this single element. 
because we are not interested in naming the element. And now the last case statement which is bit tricky. We are going to check if a list has at least two elements. I am going to denote element elements with the name head1 and head2 and will omit first element and choose the second element to stitch to the tail of the list and will send the list for further evaluation. Let us use our previously declared list to test our method and the result is as expected. All the recursions in both of the previous method I have used are not tail recursive. So as a practice, you guys can try out to convert these recursions into tail recursion. So we have learned to play around with list elements using pattern match and recursion. Well, in contrast to head and tail, Scala list also has init and last. So last would give you the last element in a list and in it would give you all the elements except for the last. These are not as effective as head and tail as you have to go through all the elements of the list to find out in it or last. I would advise you to use them judiciously. Alright, so there are few other utility methods that can be helpful to evaluate the list. So first is is empty. As the name suggests, the function will check if the given list is empty or not. The function is available for all the collections including both mutable and immutable. Converse of it is non-empty method that would check if the list has any elements available. You can use either size or length to find out how many elements are available in a list. Both of the functions are same. Let us give it a quick demo. So first we will try to check our isEmpty method. There are a couple of ways in which you can declare an empty list. One is to call list constructor with empty braces or to use nil. Both will do the job. However, if you notice, we do not have any type of the list. If you want to be specific about the type of empty list, then perhaps you need to inform Scala. So if I want to declare an empty list of integers, then I can declare a val, provide it type, and then assign it nil. There is yet another elegant way to define an empty collection, and that is to use empty method. Let us have a look. So we will call list.empty and then we'll provide type of list. Using empty function is more expressive than any other way to define an empty list. Now let us try to find out if list is empty and indeed it is. Next is that non-empty function will return false. And finally the size of the list is zero. So today we have seen how to pattern match to deconstruct a list and then few other useful functions to evaluate a list. I think in day-to-day -day coding, list plays an important role. Most of the time, I find myself using list in some way or the other. I hope you have enjoyed the session today. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.